Okay, welcome back to part two. Uh, this is this lovely autumn scene that we are painting here. Now, I did go ahead and put in just this piece here and this, but it was only very, very quickly and very general. Um, I'll show you how I did it. It's just very, very quick. So, right, this is turning out really nice now. Some lovely warm colours and that kind of mauve blue up there in the background really kind of complements these oranges. So they're very complementary colours, okay? Um, that's kind of something that you learn as you're going along. Certain colours will match certain shades and it really kind of draws your eye into the painting. Now I have a nice cup of tea, which I'm going to now take a sup of. There we go, nothing like a nice cup of tea when you're painting. Um, I have some tissue, my turpentine and my colours from the last tutorial. If you didn't watch it, I strongly suggest you go and watch part one because it was brilliant. Um, now I have titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow pale, burnt cyan, a touch of magenta, just a little. I have some crimson, some cadmium red, some burnt umber, some black and a little touch of phthalo blue. Um, I may need some extra cadmium red, I think. Let me see, yes. I put a little tiny bit of cadmium red on my palette just so I don't have to go get it later. I may need a little. Okay, right. So we're kind of pretty much now onto part two. The water and the water here with a bit of river reflections, that kind of thing. But I just want to kind of work another little bit on the rock area here. I want to darken that right down, okay? Really, really dark. Now, I wouldn't be too fussy with all of this because there's lots of bits of water coming down in between these kind of rocks. Now, it's very impressionistic, okay? It's just an impression of rocks and I put a hint of a kind of a pale blue in there as well. Just a little touch to complement that blue again. So look, I still have to do a lot more work on this. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm taking a small flat brush, I'm going to dampen it. And I'm going to go for some very, really rich, warm colours for this now, okay? So I'm going to go back with some brown, some burnt umber. Let's take a little burnt umber. And, you know, it's just a case of um, picking out the shapes of the rocks. Now... A lot of this that I've done, even with the knife, a lot of this is kind of base layers. I will be kind of adding more to these as I need to. I just think um, it needs a bit more, do you understand? Now, I have a bit of turpentine in this, quite a bit. So it's just flowing around now, pretty much like a very thin sort of um, acrylic kind of a paint, okay, you see? And I'm even allowing some of the colours underneath to show through. So I suppose you could call this a little bit of glazing at the same time, all right? Let's just say we're kind of applying a little glaze to our painting. Now, that's fine. That's all I want for that side. I just want to strength strengthen some of the shadows here and there. Now, what I did for this section was really, I just took a very dark colour, a reddy brown, and I went like this all the way along, up, up and down. And then I just took a rough brush like this and I added in some little bits of foliage like this and I kind of dabbed and dabbed here and there. You see? That's kind of pretty much the gist of what I'd done um, at, the at the end of the last tutorial. I was kind of sitting at the very end of the last tutorial and I thought I might just get this in. I know I should have probably recorded it, but um, I didn't, unfortunately. So... That's all I did. I just kind of blocked it in with a brush loosely and I added some lights into it as well. Now I'm keeping it nice and dark just at the bottom here, okay? Because that's kind of where all the shade tends to be. And I'm going also going to darken some of these in here. Just a little. Okay, now I'll sit back and just take a quick look at that. That's nice, I like that. And then I might add a suggestion of one or two kind of lighter rocks here and there. So I'm gonna just give this a wipe on the tissue, take some of that paint off. I'm gonna take some cyan and Naples yellow. And I'm just going to add some lighter um, impressions of some rocks here and there. Okay, so I'm just gonna come down like this and imagine there's just kind of light hitting some of the rocks. Now, it's quite a warm colour, but I will add some lights to these in a moment. So, you can see what I'm doing. It's just 
um, an impression of a little bit of light catching some of the rocks here and there. You see? Some more Naples yellow. Naples yellow and burnt sienna are wonderful colours for uh, light on rocks, I find. They give a wonderful kind of a natural tone. Okay? Now I'll give my brush a wipe again, just to keep it clean. And let's go and do this one here. Let's go around here and soften that one in. And I'm pulling them in the same direction as the rock. So whichever way that rock is falling, for example, this way, look, I'm going to pull it down like this and then soften it down into the dark colour, you see? And it creates a real kind of a sharp, edgy rock kind of a look. And I apply one or two just here and there. I don't want to go too far with this now because I don't want to add too much detail to, to only one part of the painting. I want everything to sort of flow nicely across the painting. Now that's fine. I'll do one or two more of those just over on this side. Little burnt sienna, little Naples yellow. And let's just add one or two of those just here and there. A bit, bit more Naples yellow, I reckon. And it's just to suggest the light, just on one or two rocks. Remember, this is going to be, a lot of this will be covered by um, bits of water kind of coming down here and there. So, not to worry too much, okay? Now, that's not bad. And what I'm going to do is, um, I want to add some little bits of detail to some of this over here. So I'm going to take a small pointy brush and get some black with some brown. Plenty of turpentine. And I'm just going to suggest some of the crevices of that rock, okay? Just to make it a little bit more sharper. There we go. Plenty of turpentine in this now. There we go. And you can even soften it in with your finger as well. So it's just about bringing out some of the darks here and there in the painting, okay? And they will really kind of show off those shadowed areas in the end. They will make a big, big difference. And I want to add a bit of dark in around here as well. And take a bit more. So some of this will be covered with little patches of water kind of streaming down on top of it as well. So again, you know, don't go to too much trouble with all of this. Just keep it simple, all right? Nice and simple. So you can see now it's starting to take a little bit of shape, isn't it? Um, all right, let me take a look down, see how we're doing. Um, I'm going to put in a bit of a rock in here. So I'll take some black and a bit of brown. And I'll suggest a bit of a rock in there like that, okay? That's all we need to do. And take a touch of yellow and touch of Naples yellow. And perhaps make that slightly greeny, okay? And another bit there even. So that little bit of yellow now mixes with the black and gives you a nice kind of a green tone. And in fact, to follow that along, we could even add touches of that color here and there on the other ones as well. So that helps now just kind of tie everything in together. And it doesn't kind of just show one piece. It brings everything together, that hint of green. Now, that's even enough, okay? Right, moving along. I want to lighten some of this area here. So I'm just going to take a little rough brush, just like this, okay? And I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, touch of cadmium red, and just suggest a hint of color kind of coming down here and there, okay? See, just like that. Here and there. Little dabs, and perhaps a little bit there. I could even take a hint of black and mix it with the yellow to make it a hint of a green, kind of a greeny tone in there. All right, that'll do fine. Next on the list, we have a couple of nice trees coming out at the side here, don't we? Let's get those in, come on, let's have a bit of fun. 
let's get some dark brown some burnt umber yes this takes lots of burnt umber with lots of turpentine and let's just go for it get some of these nice trees in now you want lots of burnt umber and lots of turpentine in this even a touch of black as well look just to help it flow across your canvas there we go and we turn this into the painting and that immediately then kind of draws your eye across into the painting you see to be honest I'm not even looking at the reference photo I'm just going this on my own doing it my own way you can copy the painting exactly if you like or the, the photograph exactly as you like but I prefer to just kind of go my own as well give it my own little stamp isn't that right Okay, we can soften this down now with your finger. Look, just pull it all down. Disappears into that rock underneath. And let's put another couple of ones. Let's put another one up here. And I'm using a very small brush, so lots of turpentine. Okay, that'll help it really flow nicely. And go up there. And couple of quick, a quick couple of flicks just for branches. That's all. Nothing... Nothing too fancy. Because we're going to be putting more um, foliage and stuff around these later. So just look nice and quick. And of course there are, I know there are lots of fantastic artists on YouTube and they might spend hours and hours doing these little trees. But I'm very sort of loose like that when it comes to things like this. I like to just kind of give impressions of things in landscapes and um, not kind of focus too much on little tiny details. I think that's just the way I paint and that's the way I've always painted. So that's the way I'm going to keep it. So let's add a little touch of light onto some of these now, yes? Let's some, take some burnt cyan with some Naples yellow. Nice and thick, okay? And we just add a little highlight here and there to some of those. You see? It's just a hint. And a little bit around here. Okay, that's fine. Now, that'll do fine. And then we can take our palette knife again and let's try this one okay let's try the one with the flat edge for a change and let's just take a little let's take a nice rich color now for this let's try a little cadmium red and let's try a little burn cyan and give those a fast mix like that and let's go up here now and just add square that across there look okay nice and loose And this will be a lovely kind of an accent colour then in the painting. And we could even take a hint of yellow and a hint of white. So you see, it's very abstract, you know, isn't it? Nice and simple. I'm not worried too much. Okay, moving on to the water. And I'm, for the water now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do something that I would normally do uh, when I'm painting water like this. Um, I'm going to put on a nice dark, a nice dark colour, okay? Let's take some phthalo blue and let's take a little crimson and make a nice mauve here, okay? Nice rich, rich mauve. And I'm going to put that on. Let me just have a look at this now. There. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit more crimson. And I'm going to just go to the top of the water and I'm going to fill that in. Okay, bring it right down. And we do the other side. And this will be the undertone of the water. So this will show through my little bits of white that I put on there. My nice kind of light pinky, bluey kind of tones for the water. Alright, there we go. Just scrape it away down, 
it's not too wet, not too dry, it's just scrape it right across there, okay? There we go. Now that's the base of my waterfall, the base colours in. In fact, let's add a touch of black even towards the end. Give it a bit of depth, just down at the end of the water, okay? Scrape it up, it's quite dry, I'm just scraping it in. And okay, that's that. Now for the water. I'm going to put my water right on top of this now because it's sort of soaking kind of in slightly into the, um, the canvas. But before I do that, I just want to fix these little patches up here. So I'm going to take some brown, let's say. I'm going to go along there and just fill that in, all right? Just to darken it down a little so there's no white left. And in fact, I may take a touch of black with cyanide and suggest a kind of a bank up there or something. And my reason for doing this is when I've got to put my water on, it'll be a nice dark color up in the background, you see? And that'll help my water show nicely. Okay. Let me get a brush for my water. Now, I'm trying to think what brush should I use. I was thinking possibly something like that. I could use my large stubby, but I want to get more refined with it. I don't want to go too much. Um, I could also use a fan brush. I think I'll use this first, okay? Now, it's dry, very dry brush. And I'm going to take some of the blue and some of the pink. And then, give it a rub and take lots of white into this. So I want a very bluey, mauve kind of a colour for the water, okay? But I don't want to go too bright with the water at first. So now let me just try this and see what it looks like. A little bit more blue. A little bit more white. And I'm going to try this now and see how it goes. Right, let's go. Bring it over, turn it down. And it's not like a traditional waterfall. It's more kind of rip, it's kind of a bit here and there, isn't it? It's not like a straight waterfall at all. And I'm going to pull it down then and let it sort of feather out, you see? Now, let me try that again. Okay. Now, let me just sit back for a moment and take a look at that. I know now it's completely different to what we're painting, but this is just the initial, this is the first kind of step that I, I would take when I'm painting something like this. Now, there we go. We take a bit more white and a touch more blue. And then I'll take a bit more white and I'll come off of this rock here. Like that. Pulling everything down gently. I grab a bit more white and I go at either side of that, like there. And then a bit more there. Okay, now I'll stop every now and again just to look. Just to look, nothing else. I'm switching brushes now to a smaller brush. And I'm going to just go for some white, perhaps with a touch of pink, okay? A slight little touch of pink in this. So it's whitey pink. And I'm going to go over here then, and I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to just start tumbling the water down, you see? Little kind of flicks, so it's sort of tumbling. Understand? And let me see now, it almost sort of merges into this 
rocky area slightly, doesn't it? Just slightly. So let me just come over here now and get it really strong over here. Just be careful not to make the waterfall just all the same colour all the way through and just white. Do you understand? I do try and... You see, that's why I've done the dark first because it really helps. Do you understand what I mean? It really does help. Um, okay, let's go here. Bring this white right across here. Little tiny curves, that's all I'm doing, okay? Oh, let me sit back again and take a look at this. There, it's not bad. Um, I'll take a bit more pink in this and a touch of Naples yellow and that will give me a warm peachy kind of tone I'm going to add some of that in just here and there a little bit more Naples yellow I'm going for a peachy kind of a colour now okay and I'm going to just go over the rock just slightly with that Now when I get to the end, I am going to create a little mist. And I love creating this little misty effect at the end. It really makes a big difference to the water. Just a little look. Again, it's not in the photograph, but I don't mind. I like to put it in. I think it makes a nice touch. It softens everything out. Yeah, and go right across the front of this rock as well. See? There now. How about that, huh? And up this side here. So isn't that better? Nice and soft. So I'm going to, next, I'm going to just take my smaller brush. And I'm going to make some white a little blue and I'm going to start adding some of that now here and there to the waterfalls just to give it more life okay that's all um, okay where are we over here and let's put a little bit around this rock over here And let's put a couple of little bits over through those rocks over there. And around this rock, it's very sort of prominent around the rock there, isn't it? And let's put a little bit up there. And uh, we could put some just through here and there on that one. Alright. Coming on nice. Not bad at all, is it? Considering we're only 20 minutes in, you know, something like that, it's not bad. Now, I'll go over here, and I'm going to bring some of that, let me just get a bit of light blue now again, and I'm going to bring some of that down here, wiggle it down along into the water, okay? Some bits of that light, watery colour popping down here and there. And we could also have a few tiny hints of this, Okay, I'll take a smaller brush and I'll show you. A few tiny little hints of this popping down here and there, see? Isn't that nice? Just kind of a little hint of it here and there. Now, let's move on to our river. I'm anxious to get the river in because 
there's a lot of work in this river here. So what I'm going to do is, um, again, I'm just going to take my big brush. I'm looking at the photograph. So there's a lot of this kind of color, accent color going on. So I'm going to take some yellow, some burnt sienna, and some brown. And I might take a hint of black as well. So we have a sort of a mustardy color, don't we? A dark kind of a mustard. This is only the base coat now again, okay? Put that along there. And we're, I'm watching colors. I'm looking at what we have. So I'm saying I have a little red going into it. And what I'm aiming to do here is I want to make these colors much darker than the colors that, that they're reflecting up on top, okay? So I want to really go much, much darker with these colors. Let me take some burnt umber with a little brown, a little crimson in it. Okay, go across here. And I'll take some black into that. Go along here with a little black look. Soften it in. And I'm damping my brush every so often just to moisten the colours, that's all. Now, go along here with this. Nice warm kind of a tone. And let's take a little black with a touch of yellow. Um, a little bit more yellow. Very darkish kind of a green going on. Then I'm going to start lightening it slightly. I'll take some cadmium yellow, some Naples yellow, and a little red. I'm going to just start lightening that colour just a little. And let's go for more. Let's take a bit of sienna, some Naples yellow. Um, okay, we'll go right across here, I think, with that. Some burnt umber, some cadmium red. So now, let me just sit back for a moment to take a quick look at my colours. I'm just judging the colours. Do you understand what I mean? I'm just taking a look and see how everything kind of fits together. Now I'm going to start putting in some warmer colours. So some cadmium red, some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to start introducing some of that just here and there. Look, with a little flat brush, I'm going to start pulling it through. Let's go for it. Come on, why not? And a little bit of turpentine. Start softening these colours through. And we have a lot of yellow reflecting around here, don't we? Let's put some of that in. Okay. Uh, let's take some burnt cyanide. A lot of that kind of warm, rich cyanide colour going on. And then I'm going to take some real dark colour to reflect these dark patches of colour here, alright? So let's take some burnt umber and a little bit of black. And I'm just going to sort of give it a little wiggle here and there, okay? And I'll do a little bit around here, like that. bit more black perhaps and this is always a work in progress I'll always be constantly chopping and changing a little bit as I go along now I want to create the impression of um, let me just fix my phone here the impression of little rocks that it's shallow okay now I've done this in the past 
It's a little bit tricky, but let's try it. So I'm going to use a small brush, okay? A small flat brush, something with a flat edge. And I'm just going to take some, I'm going to start with some darks. So a little bit of turpentine there now and some burnt umber. Let's try burnt umber first with a hint of black, okay? I'm just going to go along and put some of these in like this. Right? I'll show you now. Just an impression of some kind of dark rock stone under the surface. And perhaps even take a touch of burnt cyanide. We can lighten it a little bit as we go. Uh, let's take more burnt cyanide, a little bit of burnt umber. And it's very sort of hit and miss. So I'm not going the very, very same all the way across, okay? It's just perhaps even little patches of them. Some big, some small. But I'm using the tip of the brush, okay? And as it goes off into the distance then, they'll get lighter and maybe a little bit lighter, okay? So just disappearing off and softening in to that water, okay? There we are. No. So you can see what I mean. Okay, let me just sit back now for a moment to take a look at this. And I'm going to take a small brush then and just add a little hint of light to some of these. So some burnt cyanide and some Naples yellow. And again, I'm sticking with the same kind of tones. Do you understand what I mean? All the way through. Now, it's just here and there. It's not every single one of them. It's just a little dab here and there. And I'm not putting on very sharp brush strokes either. I'm sort of dragging it across the canvas. So it's kind of very hazy kind of effect. See what I mean? Just like that. So already you can begin to see waters, rocks under the kind of the surface of the water. Now, let me just soften that across just a little. And then sit back and let's take a quick look at what we have. Okay, let's do a bit of waterfall here. Let's try and get this water, nice water in down at the bottom here, okay? I'm going to take my small flat. I'm going to just give that a clean of my turpentine. In fact, you know what we'll do? We'll try the medium stubby, okay? Nice and clean. Let's take some white and we mix it in this nice area here now where we had the blue earlier. Take a touch of blue. Now, that's a very strong blue, so be careful. And let's just go along here and put this in first. I'm going to kind of soften it out then into that other color, okay? Now, be careful because this blue next to the brown will mix and it will make a greeny kind of a colour. So I'm going to take a touch of crimson in this. And I'm going to add a little bit of crimson in there. Isn't that nice now? So come right across there. And then soften it out into the brown. There we go. Look, that's nice now, isn't it? Now this brush is kind of quite splayed out, so it's not sharp, you see it? Do you understand what I mean? So what I'll do is, I'll just take that white for now, and I'll create a bit of mist, just while I have this brush on my hand. Create a little bit of mist over there. I might as well use it while I have it, isn't that right? And create a bit of mist along here. Just making good use of the brush, that's all. Okay, now I put this down and I'm going to take my flat edge brush. So any small flat brush. I don't have any small flat edged stubby brushes at the moment. Stuff quite worn, so they're splayed slightly. So I'm going to use a nice new flat little brush. It's just a cheap synthetic brush. And I'm going to take some blue, lots of white, and a little hint of crimson. That'll give me a nice bright mauve kind of a colour. Now, I'm just going to look at the photograph there. And let me see. Let's create 
a couple of little ripples here and there look and a sort of hit and miss always keep your brush strokes horizontal when you're creating ripples like this don't be tempted to go down at an angle like this or like this always keep them horizontal even when you're wiggling the brush slightly so when i'm wiggling the brush i'm keeping it horizontal all of the time you see and here and there just start to drag it across the canvas and let it just lift off itself you see and that then will kind of push the rocks down under the surface of the water you see so this is a more kind of refined technique i suppose rather than just going along with the palette knife all of the time it's nice to try it like this as well just to get the hang of your brush strokes and get used to the way the brush works on the canvas there we go not lovely very very nice and we can do a couple over here perhaps so there could be a couple of rocks in the water but the water is coming down and hitting some of those rocks here and there sticking out of the water you see creating little ripples and you can even drag them across your finger as well you see you don't just have brushes you have fingers as well there now let me take a hint of blue and i'm going to make it a little more bluey and the only reason i'm doing that now is just to complement the waterfall so bringing that little touches of blue here and there down into the reflection makes a big difference okay now let's stop and take a look at this yeah it's not bad i'll soften this one slightly just kind of let it merge back into the water i'll take a bit more and i'll add a bit more around here to reflect that white of that waterfall okay so just a little bit more prominent just here and there just to suggest that kind of reflection of that what the bright water that's all in the waterfall so a little bit more just in one section you see it's almost like it's reflecting slightly down isn't it now a little bit more white a little bit there and perhaps a little more hint of it there now let's soften it back let's go right back here and get some nice whitey color along here and soften that out with our fingertips like that and then i can take a small brush okay small pointy brush take some of the white some of that blue and we go over here by the river bank add a little touch of that here and there just to separate the bank from the river do a couple of little wiggles okay let's sit back take another look at that no that's not bad at all is it okay let me see now we have a couple along here which i suppose i could try and get in so let's just put a handful just along there around the rock okay just like so then we have a big rock sticking up here and i want to create a nice rock here now so i'm going to take some black some burnt umber and a bit of red and i'm going to create my own kind of a rock here i know in the picture now there's a big big kind of a round boulder type of a rock coming up like that i'm going to create my own kind of type of a rock there we go fill all this in and i just fill in this area here as well okay there we go i might bring a rock down a bit further over here actually as well there yeah that's a bit better now isn't it now so we have our base of the rock filled in yes would you agree then what i'm going to do is take my small flat brush again i'm going to take some 
Born Soyana, and Naples yellow. Perhaps a touch of magenta. And I'm going to create some light on this rock. So I'm just going to go along there on the top of the rock. Come down and soften it around. And I'm going to follow the curvature of that rock then as well. Now even a bit of mauve would help as well. So it comes around and it turns down then, you see? Like so. And we'll keep going with, with this technique until we're pretty happy with what we have. So let's go here. That's nice now. Naples yellow with magenta. What a wonderful colour. There you see. Lightning as it turns. Up on top there. Let's go again. Let's even take a bit of white, or uh, sorry, a bit of cadmium yellow, some magenta and some white. And let's put that nice highlight colour in up there as well. And I'm going to soften some of that around. Follow the curve of that all the way around. Now, you sit back for a moment and just have a quick look at what we have. Okay, now, let's put, with my small pointy brush, little touches of a light colour around the rock here and there. Okay, just to separate it from the water, the water's edge. There we go. And then I'm going to take some black. And I'm going to go down with some black and create some little, just dark ridges here and there along the rock. Okay. You see, nice and simple. And then, with my, let's try a palette knife. I'm going to add some autumn leaves here and there just to that rock. So a bit of cadmium yellow, some cyanide, perhaps a hint of red. You see? Isn't it wonderful? It's so easy to do. Just pick up your knife and throw a bit of paint onto it. And I think that is looking pretty pretty good isn't it um, i might take a small brush with a hint of white here and there just for the waterfall and just to make that pop just that little bit more here and there a little bit over here but I wouldn't overdo it. I think if it looks fine, if you're happy with it, just leave it alone. Because sometimes if you doodle with things, they can become worse. And you only end up messing up the scene and um, upsetting the balance in the painting. Now, not always, but you need to kind of know yourself when to let uh, leave it well alone. Do you understand? Let me just take a look at that. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Now I have a frame for this. I do have a frame, but first I have to sign this wonderful painting. Let's come down here and sign this. S. Conway. And it's available if you're interested. It's always available. I have a frame which I made earlier and it's for my kitchen, this painting, so I'm going to then bring you in and show you the painting in the kitchen. How about that? Let's put this lovely big frame, it's a big, big, big frame, on our lovely painting and see what it looks like. Now look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? Now let me zoom in and take a look at what we have created. See? Nice and simple. Just simple brush strokes. 
try not to go too far into too much detail because I think if you can do it, brilliant, but I rather keep it nice and sort of impressionistic like this and nice and loose. But that's just me, okay? It's completely up to yourself, whichever you prefer. And there we go. So that, my friends, is the end of that. Let me turn the camera and wish you all a very, very good week ahead painting. I hope you try this. Um, thank you so much for the suggestion. And um, again, just keep it loose. Keep it nice and loose. If you have any questions, just ask. And um, I'm going to go in there now and hang this up on my kitchen wall and see what it looks like. I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. So yes, I'm very, very happy with this. I'll just add a little, tiny few little details here and there with a pointy brush. That's it. So go on. Try that. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't done, done so already. Um, you're missing out on lots of fun and lots of lovely paintings. So uh, I, until next week, I will see you again very, very soon in the next couple of days. Okay? So go on. And again, thank you so much, patrons, for all your support. You're very, very kind. I really appreciate that. So God bless and happy painting.